Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Life Support. The only lifestyle program that shows you all how to do it all. While giving you all four of the experts. It's great to be here for you tonight. Oh, it sure is. I'm Todd, and tonight I'll be showing all you nine to fivers a great way to catch up on some Z time during work time. I'm Sigourney, and tonight I'll be showing all you modern women how to deal with the devastating dilemma of getting a bad haircut. I'm Penny, and a little later I'll be letting you sisters in on the best way to deal with a pain in the ass, big brother. I'll the Dr. Rudy here, and tonight I'll be introducing you men to a great way to work out without uncomfortable objectification. Oh, finally, I'll be looking out for that. But it's best to look out for everything. That's right. So let's begin, shall we? Recently, the police force has resorted to using sniffer dogs on public transport to detect drugs. In my opinion, this unfairly discriminates against environmentally aware drug dealers who choose public transport over less green alternatives like private vehicles. Anyway, if you're a drug dealer and you're worried about getting your dope to a deal, don't despair. Here's what you do. Simply get yourself a Labrador. Wrap your gear in a condom and shove it up your pooch's bum. <laughs> then if a police sniffer dog starts sniffing your dog's bum, it's unlikely to arouse suspicion because dogs sniff each other's bums all the time. See ya. There's nothing worse than starting the working day exhausted due to a bad sleep the night before. And if you're a tradesman like me, all physical on that, people don't like it when you nap or go slow on the job. So unfortunately, there's nothing you can do about it. But for those of you who earn at the office, there is a way to catch up on that lost sleep time during work time. I'll show you how. To start with, paint some white out on your eyelids. Then use a whiteboard marker to draw on some eyes. Then run a length of coat hanger wire through the length of your tie. Bending it here, you've made yourself a little stand to prop up your chin. Now, remember, your head weighs about five kilograms and when you're sleeping, you're fully relaxed. So, if you don't want to asphyxiate, a Windsor knot is a bit thicker and will probably protect your throat better. Now, remember, you want everyone to think you're really enjoying yourself. So, bend a couple of paper clips into the shape of some small hooks. Then, loop a rubber band around your ears and clip the hooks into the corners of your mouth and you've made yourself a little smile aid. Now, all you need to do is lean forward, relax both hands above the desk and settle into some high grade, uninterrupted dream time. Oh, remember, a boss likes a worker who turns up early, works through lunch, finishes late and keeps quiet. So, whilst you catch up on sleep you didn't get last night, you could be in line for a promotion and who knows, you may even sleep your way to the top. Keep up the good work, Todd. It's becoming an increasing problem for fit, attractive, heterosexual men like you and me. The constant, unsolicited ogling of your physique by gay men. It is happening with increasing regularity and in increasingly surprising locations. Even a heterosexual retreat like this gymnasium. Such objectification demeans us and can pose questions that we'd rather not ponder. You may be surprised to know that not all of us are so thrilled at being a gay icon. Don't worry, there is a way to enjoy freedom from the scrutiny with dignity. Just borrow an idea from another race of men that can't control themselves. Simply cover the contours of your arousing physique in a loose-fitting, light and breezy chador. Relatively cheap and in surplus supply, thanks to the recent downsizing of the Afghani market. 
Now you can enjoy being out for a workout in total comfort. And the unrestricting nature of your new attire means it's perfect for all those physical occasions where you feel on display. On the football field, on a bike, and it's perfect if you are a lifesaver, especially on a Sydney beach. So there you have it, men. Don't put up with gratuitous gag gaping. Take away the temptation and feel the freedom only your forefathers could have known. Bye now. If the men do it, then everyone would be covered up and no one would really know how they look like or what their true colours are. It'd be awful. Um, you'd live in a society where it, it didn't really matter what looks depended on and coming from a fashion industry, that's quite important. I don't think it would become a fashion unless like for really ugly people who don't want to be seen or really shy or something maybe. Like walking around like that in society, uh, it's just not on. You know, if the women have to wear them, the men should wear them. Why not? At least it'll be a surprise, you know? Yeah. When they take it I don't it know off. what kind of surprise you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs>First, get yourself a local paper. If you're after a fridge, for example, the trading post is probably best. If it's a new house, any real estate section will do. Okay, now you scour the for sale sections and mark the items that match what you want. Here we are, fridges. Okay, sure, it took me a few minutes, but it's a worthwhile investment. I've got a list of available fridges. Okay, here's the important part. Just carefully choose the cheapest one. There, that's the one. It's that simple. I reckon I've saved 250 bucks right there on what I would have spent if I bought the most expensive one. <laughs> and it's the same with just about anything you want to buy. You want to save thousands on a new house? Just shop around and buy the cheapest one. But how do you know the one you're buying is the cheapest one? Well, first you'll need a calculator like this. If you subtract the price of the fridge that you want to buy, from the price of another fridge and you get a number that's more than zero, that means that your fridge is cheaper. So remember, save money every time like the professionals do. No, not the expensive one, the cheaper one. Oh yeah, thanks. No worries. Now, you know I don't like to harp on about issues, but on one issue, I just can't stay silent any longer. As a modern woman, I feel it is my duty to speak out about the sizing of women's clothing. Take a look at this dress. It's a size 14 and it costs $200. Now, take a look at this dress. It's exactly the same, but it's a size 8 and it also costs $200.
Isn't that appalling? The size 8 uses significantly less material and thread, and yet it costs the same amount. It just isn't fair. Essentially, thin women are being forced to subsidise fat women's clothing. So, if you're a properly proportioned modern woman like me, and you're sick of suffering from plus size prejudice, why not do what I do? When you're buying a dress, always buy the bigger size. Then, when you get home, remove the excess fabric from your dress by cutting along the seam line. And then re-sew for your figure fitting size 8. <laughs> Looks fabulous, doesn't it? And look at all the leftover fabric I've got to accessorise with. There's enough to make this darling Dorothy bag, a cute case for my mobile phone, and a classy cover for my car's steering wheel. That's over $100 worth of accessories. And it didn't cost petite me a cent. So, next time you feel like buying up big, think big. Geez, it's good to have you back, Penny. I was a little worried about you last week. You needn't have concerned yourself. I was just fine. Yeah, but hearing you're all locked up, missing the whole show, I must say, it didn't seem very you at all. Which makes me wonder if it is. What are you trying to say, Todd? I'm just saying that I've noticed that you've changed. Changed? Changed how? I don't know, just like your hair, your voice, your face. Todd! And you look a bit shorter, and I swear you were right-handed last year. What are you talking about? Last year I was exactly the same. Yeah? Can you prove it? All right, I'll show you a bit from last year's show. Remember that time when I was telling everyone about feng shui and the best way to get free fresh flowers? Simply grab a floral tribute from one of the road's numerous black spot florists. This bunch looks fresh enough to last through an Easter long weekend. See? Same face, same voice. Same attitude, but still something doesn't feel quite right. All right. I know. Remember the time when Sigourney and I were trying to help out that little boy? Here's what you have to do. Just grab a Polaroid camera and take some naked pictures of yourself. Then leave those in your teacher's staff room pigeonhole. Once they're discovered, he won't be teaching at your or any other school ever again. Well, there you go. It was you. See? Everything's exactly the same. Yeah. I don't know after watching that. Does Sigourney seem a little different to you? Todd, no one has time for this. They'd rather be watching this. You know, a very important part of a man's health is his self-esteem. And self-esteem is always tested in your friendships because your friends are the ones who will always try to put you down in a social situation. It's a tribal thing. Every social group has an unspoken pecking order and life is a competition to see who is the alpha male. So whether you are talking about the Australian cricket team or what's happening in the Middle East, winning an argument can be terribly important for your self-esteem. So what do you do? Well, don't waste your time with schoolboy debating tricks or actually knowing what you are talking about. There is a much quicker and more enjoyable way to make sure you will win any argument. All you have to do is sleep with all your friends' wives. To do bad things, feign a lot. Ergo, Jerry Adams. There is no more powerful comeback to a devastatingly well-argued demolition of your views on the problems in Northern Ireland than to say... Ergo, yourself. And that's why you're completely wrong. Oh, yeah? Well, I slept with your wife. And she loved it. Of course, you may not even have to use this debating weapon of mass destruction. Just knowing that the person you're arguing with doesn't have a clue that you've balked his wife will give you a very powerful feeling of superiority, sure to boost your self-esteem. But beware, there is a remote possibility that they may come back with the old, oh yeah, well I've slept with yours. So to make sure of your ground, make sure also that you slept with their daughter, or at least give them a good tongue pash. Why didn't somebody tell me about this? Excuse me? That's all there is to it, men. A guaranteed and fun way to boost your self-esteem. Bana. Mmm. Gin. This quiche 
is a triumph. Mm. Hey, next time you're in the supermarket, don't walk past this little machine. Even though you haven't paid for it, you're still allowed to use it. I think I'll try the Italian blend. Oh yeah, this fresh stuff's full on. Oh yeah, a hardcore hit. Best of all, if you don't take it through the checkout, you don't have to pay for it. it suits me, because I'll never buy coffee. It causes cancer. See ya. Ladies, when it's time to move up in the world, it's just so difficult to know which suburb to move into. After all, we all judge a woman by where she lives. So, why not test drive a potential suburb before you commit? Of course, any suburb worth considering will have lots of smart curbside cafes and eateries. So, slip into your best get what you want dress, pick the prime seat, order a latte, open the street directory and assume the position. Don't forget that I'm lost look. If it is the right suburb, it will only be a matter of time before a suitable gentleman will stop to ask you if you need assistance. Befriend this gentleman and go home with him. An overnight stay is the best way to get a good feel for any potential suburb. Use the opportunity to take a look over the fences in your potential neighbourhood, discover what the traffic noise is like at night and determine how long it will take to drive to the beautician in the morning. And there you have it girls. Using a local to test drive a potential suburb will give you a real insight and take the guesswork out of your choices. Not to mention giving you ample opportunity to check out some charming, eligible gentlemen. Well, Dr Rudy, it's great to be back and solving problems. Like the one in this letter from Cameron of Subiaco. Oh, good day, WA. And it's addressed to you, Dr Rudy. Dear Dr Rudy, I was watching the show a couple of weeks ago and was relieved to see you offering a cure for impotence. I did as you said and lit a bushfire for that pyromaniac arousal, but still nothing happened. Is there something else I can do? I'm willing to try anything. Please help. Well, Cameron, it seems my bushfire remedy is not for everyone, but don't worry, there is a guaranteed cure for impotent people like you. Try and have sex with someone you actually find attractive. That's it? That's ridiculous. Excuse me, young lady. It's not as ridiculous as someone taking a sicky on national television and then gobbling together some ludicrous story as a cover. All right. There was another reason I wasn't here last week. Yes? I had really bad pash rash all over my chin. My word. Yeah, and I couldn't go on camera. It looked like someone had taken to me with an orbital sander. And then it got infected. How romantic. Yeah, it was pretty worth it. And who was the perpetrator of this passionate act, hmm? It's just some guy. No one you or anyone else on the team would know. Really? Well, I thought that you and young... Come on, guys. We haven't got time for all this chin wagging because right now it's time for the next segment. Having a big brother can be a real pain in the ass. For most of us, it rounds out to about 10 years of hitting, spitting and verbal abuse. And after trying everything to stop the imbecile, you soon realise that there's just no reasoning with a dumb animal like that. But don't worry, sister siblings, because there is a simple way to stop that tormenting permanently. All you have to do is install a concealed closed circuit camera in your brother's bedroom. So you can record some of his more tempestuous self-love sessions. Just make sure you position it so you get a good shot of his bed. Then the next time he's hitting, teasing or just annoying you... Beat me! Alright then. Simply show him the video you have. Then tell him that if he doesn't leave you alone, he'll post the footage on the internet. Then the whole world can watch him go for a gallop, not to mention his back-breaking attempts to blow himself. Remember, it's a good idea to make more than one tape. At his age, that shouldn't be a problem. 
and make sure you stash them away somewhere so we can't find and destroy them. And that's all there is to it. You'll find that not only will he leave you alone now, he'll bend over backwards to be nice to you any time he can. I'll squeeze you some orange juice. Oh, thanks. Not only that, but you've denied him his most simple pastime pleasure. There's no way he'll be game to have another go now. See ya. There's nothing worse than coming home from the hairdresser, looking at yourself in the mirror and realising you have a bad haircut. Obviously your first instinct is to kill yourself, but you can't, because there might be an open casket. And if you have to go out before you have time to get your haircut professionally fixed, then you're in a tricky situation, because your friends are going to make fun of you. I hate those bad haircut jokes. Who cut your hair, the council? You look like you are run over by a lawnmower. Some things just shouldn't be joked about. So, if you don't want to be made a mockery, this calls for drastic action. Brace yourselves. This is what you have to do. Hi, everyone. Sorry I'm late. My chemotherapy got bumped back. At the end of the day, your friends will be so shocked by your bald head and so embarrassed by your terminal illness, they'll never realise you were stupid enough to go to a cheap hairdresser. So there you have it. If you have to be an object of pity, it's better to be pitied for a disease than a fashion faux pas. How are you? Tell me, what have I missed? Well, here we are at the end of another show. And personally, it couldn't have come any sooner. But don't worry, Australia. We will be back next week. And who knows? We might have a couple more surprises for you. And in the meantime, why not start writing your memoirs? And thanks, everyone for all your letters of concern. But before we go, I just want to stress that my haircut segment was just a dramatisation. I've never had a bad haircut. <laughs> Neither have I. And on that note, we better go. And remember, we're here for you. Good, Good night, night, Australia. Australia.